When a submarine is running submerged, it is the dive officer who controls the most vital operational aspect, buoyancy. The U-boat's buoyancy is managed by a series of ballast tanks, compressed air, and the bilge pump. The dive officer must be a master at balancing all three to safely manage the boat's depth. The U-boat runs on the surface, with the main ballast tanks empty and the negative tank full. This condition gives the U-boat sufficient positive buoyancy to keep the conning tower, deck and air intakes out of the sea in most sea states. When the commanding officer orders dive, the dive officer should put the planes on full down position and check the status of the safe dive panel. As senior dive officer, you are responsible for the safety of the men and boat during any submergence operation. When conducting a dive, the dive officer must check the safe dive panel before ordering the vents open and flooded. The safe dive panel shows the status of the engine room hull valves and compartment hatches. The top panel shows the port and starboard engine exhaust line valves, the engine intake, U-boat ventilation intake and exhaust valves. These are hull valves to lines that penetrate the boat's pressure hull. They must be open to run the diesels and closed when submerged. The bottom section of the panel shows five compartment lamps. The e-motor room, control room and torpedo room lamps are always lit. The diesel room lamp comes on when all the hull valves lamps are lit, and the conning tower lamp comes on when the bridge hatch is closed. When the lights are all lit, known as lights across the board, the sub is safe to dive. If a light is not lit, then that hull opening is not safe to dive. Diving with a hull valve or hatch open will result in massive flooding and possible loss of the boat with all hands. When all the lights on the safe dive panel are on across the board, the dive officer orders flood and the helmsman on the forward MBTs and the navigator on the aft MBTs open the vents, filling the tanks and giving the U-boat negative buoyancy. Now it will sink beneath the surface rapidly. The dive officer will be responsible for blowing the negative tank empty as the boat drops below 10 metres. This is known as blowing negative. While it may be tempting in an emergency to get a jump on things and flood the main ballast tanks in advance of getting safe lights across the board, it is not advised. The time you save will be negligible against the risk of sinking the boat. Being in the control room and a first-hand participant in the boat's status, you may decide to communicate with the engine room chief and helmsman in a situation where an emergency dive seems likely to alert them and increase their state of readiness. The dive officer may elect to leave the negative tank full under emergency dive conditions to assist the boat in reaching a deep depth more quickly. However, because of the water pressure at depth, this will cause the use of considerably more compressed air to empty the tank. Once the U-boat is leveled at the ordered depth, the dive officer should close the MBT vents. If the vents are left open, any attempt to blow ballast will be a futile waste of compressed air. If the commanding officer orders to dive the boat without any depth specified, the dive officer should take the boat to 20 metres and level off. If the CO orders periscope depth, the dive officer should take the boat to 20 metres and level off, then bring the boat up to periscope depth at 11 metres. If the CO orders crash dive or alarm, the dive officer should take the boat to 60 metres and level off. Generally, once the U-boat is running submerged, the dive officer should use the dive planes to change depth. The trim tanks can be used to make small adjustments or when the bilge is filling and the boat cannot maintain ordered depth through the use of the dive planes alone. If your trim tank is less than four, you may be unable to dive the boat. In order for the dive planes to have an effect on depth, the U-boat must be moving. The faster the boat moves, the more quickly the boat can change depth. Consequently, the faster the e-motors are running, the more sound they create for enemies to locate you, and the more electricity they draw from the batteries. Different configurations of the dive planes can yield different results, and are more suitable at certain times than other situations. Normal Planes Configuration This configuration is best suited for higher RPMs, such as full and great speed where your speed can fight through the drag of the water on your hull. Using this configuration at lower speeds,
can result in the drag taking away too much of the vertical momentum to the point where you might even sink when you want to go up. This configuration is recommended for emergency depth changes at high RPM. Parallel Planes Configuration When you cannot use normal planes due to low RPM, or you need to change the depth of the boat without pitching it, you can operate the dive planes in a parallel fashion. This method allows you to convert more of the forward momentum into vertical change with minimal drag. This is more suitable when doing minor depth changes at any speed, and in conjunction to trimming the boat. If you are trying to rise the boat but maintain slow speed, you may elect to introduce some air into the main ballast tanks. Bear in mind, the greater the depth, the more air it will take to push water out. It is not recommended to force more than 5 cubic metres of water from the MBTs, from 50 cubic metres to 45 on the gauge. With air in the MBTs, commonly referred to as riding the bubble, the U-boat will ascend quickly. If left unchecked, the boat will pop to the surface like a cork. This could be less than desirable in combat conditions. To avoid this, when the boat rises past 50 metres, the dive officer should station the helmsman on the forward MBTs and the navigator on the aft MBTs. When the U-boat rises to 40 metres, the dive officer will command flood and the helmsman and navigator will quickly open the MBT vents, thereby filling them again. This, in addition to proper dive plane management, should arrest the ascent and allow the dive officer sufficient control of the boat's depth. To surface, the dive officer will take the boat up with the dive planes, and then at around 20 metres, blow the water out of the main ballast tanks with high pressure air. When cruising at periscope depth, careful and constant management of the planes is required to avoid sinking too deep for the captain to see, or rising too high and exposing the U boat to the enemy. General periscope depth is between 10 and 15 metres. The observation scope is fully clear at 10 to 11 metres. The radio antenna will work as long as the boat is around 11 metres. Below 11 metres and you may miss radio traffic. The attack scope requires the U-boat to be between 11.5 to 14 metres. Bridge hatch free order is given at 7.5 metres. To lower or empty the bilge, operate the bilge pump with the red handle. Bear in mind the pump makes a significant amount of noise and can easily be detected by nearby escort ships. It also uses compressed air and electricity from the batteries. Finally, it must be noted that using the bilge pump at great depths takes much longer since there is enormous pressure outside the boat's hull. If your boat is under attack and the need to pump is great, Suggest to the commanding officer that you pump while the depth charges are detonating. The surrounding explosions will mask the pump sound emissions, and since the enemy already has an idea of where you are, it will not be that deleterious. The dive officer is also responsible for monitoring the bilge level. He should be aware of the sea state and when the bridge hatch is open. Under heavy sea states, seven or greater, some water will come through the open hatch. There is no alarm system on the bilge, merely a gauge, so the dive officer needs to check the safe dive panel periodically to see if the bridge hatch is open, and when it is, he needs to check the bilge level regularly. Compressed air is essential for blowing water out of the tanks and achieving positive buoyancy. Husband the air supply with great care. Once your supply dips below 75 kg per square centimetre, you will find your ability to service the U-boat greatly hindered, if not impossible. Be vigilant against leaking valves or not quite closed valves. It is very easy to close a valve incompletely. There will be a telltale hiss along with the diminishing pressure. After surfacing, if the situation is safe, the dive officer should make his way aft to turn on the Junkers air compressor and refill the compressed air flasks. This also gives him the opportunity to check in with the Orba machinist and electric officer and get a status report for the captain. If upon surfacing the combat conditions require the dive officer to remain on station, he may elect to send the navigator or call the chief on the control room phone. Once the boat is on the surface, the dive officer should maintain the negative tank at full, unless ordered otherwise. The dive officer will want to keep an eye on the U-boat's propulsion output, 
by viewing the port and starboard shaft RPM gauges right above the dive station. If he detects a variation from the ordered speed, he should alert the helmsman. If it is not immediately corrected, or if the variation is significant, he should advise the captain as well. This concludes the Senior Dive Officer training film. Use the link below to take the qualification exam and earn your Senior Dive Officer qualification certificate. Thank you for playing Wolfpack. Good hunting, and don't forget to close the hatch.